All you need are your shoes, some chalk, and a boulder, and you're ready to go. Hi, I'm Veronica with WatchMetro.com, and today we're speaking with some experts for some tips and tricks to boulder climbing. Behind us is a bouldering wall. Okay, bouldering is a sport that was developed initially as training for climbing and it's evolved into its own kind of side sport. Indoors, because we have limited space, we put a ton of holds on the wall. But when we set you out to do a climb, we'll tell you with tape markings which holds to use. And besides the crash mat, what other ways do climbers stay safe? The other thing you can do is to spot your partner. So basically, if you're not climbing, you put your hands up and protect the person as they're climbing. What are the ethics that people should know before they start boulder climbing? If you do get serious into it, there are a lot of ethics. For example, on most routes, you're supposed to start sitting down with your bum on the ground, and the first move has to have you lifting off the ground and then doing the first move. What's the difference between bouldering and route climbing? Bouldering is done without ropes. It's much shorter. If you fall, you're landing on pads and not on the ground, hopefully. It's less of an endurance thing. I would call it more of a power exercise. So Amanda's going to do a route here that has a few moves that are more specific to bouldering. Okay, she's going to do a move called the bicycle, first of all. She's pressing with one foot and pulling with the other. And that's called the heel hook, where instead of hooking with your toe on the hold, you've got your heel on there. It gives you a better grip. What muscles are you working specifically when boulder climbing? It's a lot of core, obviously upper body, so your back, your forearms, your biceps. When you get more into bouldering, more experienced, you're going to find you're using your hands a lot, so you can practice things that are going to get your hands stronger. So what would you say is the scariest part of boulder climbing? I'd still say is falling. If you're outside, it's going to be possibly onto rocks or anything like that. What's the level of difficulty? The levels are used by V grades for most bouldering. V1 will be the easiest or V0. Then as you go up, it's going to go V1, V2, V3, V4, and so on. We know you mastered all the moves. You compete in boulder climbing. How do you prepare before a competition? You could prepare with the team. You could either have a coach or follow some trainings with people, there's a few guys out there that have either websites or books that you can follow their training. The main way to train for competition is to focus on strength at first and then your endurance. And so you'll do like three weeks of this and then three weeks of that, depending on when the competition is. What would you say is the most common mistake made by beginners? A lot of people will, you know, go weightlifting or whatnot, which is completely useless. Muscle is heavier than fat, so it's the worst thing you could have. Can you take us through what a competition would be like? There's different formats. Isolation format, you usually have four problems and whoever makes it to the top in the last attempt or how far they get if nobody makes it to the top or you have other format which is about 50 problems and if they pick let's say your six best problems. Often it will happen in bouldering uh, or root climbing where you have to do a four point cut loose which is called a dyno. In other words you let go both your feet and your hands, everything lets go to jump to the next hole. So that's what I'm going to try to do. 